G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and I got an email about how I built this trellis here. I call it the Jesus Christ trellis because that's what my brother calls it whenever he visits here. It stands out, it's a bit of an eyesore but now that the orchard has grown out quite a bit uh, it's not as much of an eyesore from the house. But the lady who emailed me, Jan, wanted to know exactly how I built this thing because this is something she she has been searching for and uh, I thought you know why not instead of trying to uh, write out a big long email and explain it by email a picture tells a thousand words and in fact she found a picture of this trellis on an old forum site that I'd visited and, and whacked a picture on it when it was a passion fruit vine not a dragon fruit vine that was growing up at and I'll come to that in a minute while I've, why I've changed it from a passion fruit to a dragon fruit. Now, in fact, I did an old video about four years ago that's still on my channel of why I changed it over. Um, sort of hidden in the backlog of all my old archaic videos. But let's not ramble on too much more and let's get into why and how I built this thing. Uh, and, uh, and I'll explain it as, as good as I possibly can. All right, so here's this trellis. And the reason why there's a pot there is because historically, this part of the orchard in summer gets quite waterlogged. And I have since put a drainage, an ag pipe drainage all the way through the the orchard here on this side of our property and that has helped a lot with the water flow and the drainage out from the top here which is still the high ground our property slopes from our house here from this side of the property down through the veggie patch basically and down into that bottom corner where my neighbor has a dam down there I also have a dam now down here just a small pond where the ducks visit and that's where that ag pipe goes through right down to there and then there's a gully and that leads into the dam and that has somewhat helped with this issue that I used to have when I built this trellis in 2008, 2009, quite a few years ago now. So the passion fruit was growing quite well on this trellis here and uh, the only problem was because it stood out and was such a target the cockatoos found out that that it was a excellent opportunity to be able to perch on top of here and grab anywhere and start eating the fruit so before long they it formed a bit of a habit and we hardly got any passion fruits out of this thing and we we're getting more passion fruits from the vines that were growing near the house and in other locations and then I started getting into growing dragon fruit and so I decided well I might as well use this trellis uh, even though it's a little larger than I sort of wanted for a dragon fruit trellis it still could do the purpose and it is now although this one is recovering this has got two plants on this trellis a, a yellow thorny variety and a red fruiting variety and uh, they're growing together quite nicely although lately because of the really dry weather we've been having it had started to die off but you can see now it's looking quite energetic again with lots of new shoots and the reason why that is without taking away from the main aim of this video is because I've been giving it some extra water and uh, very regular water and that has brought it back to life and that's an interesting lesson that, I'm learnt, that I've learnt with uh, growing dragon fruit. And I keep learning about dragon fruit more and more. You can read about my article on my website on dragon fruit growing. Uh, you may find that quite interesting if you like dragon fruit. But anyway, let's get to the crux of it and that's how I built this. This is very simple. I just try to build things as good as I can and I use a lot of scrap. So these posts here, they could be just a standard fence post. They're the round posts. I think they're about uh, two meters high. They come in various heights, sometimes 2.4 or a meter high or so, but I've joined two together. So this first one, you can see the join mark here. 
So the, I hammered the fur, well, I dug a hole about two feet down, placed the post in, through this this pot that I cut the bottom out of. The next thing I did was got the second post, which looks about 1.8, I think it's probably a 1.8 meter post. And these two posts were actually left over from the play gym that we built over here for the kids. The boys are now too old to use this thing, so it's uh, practically useless. But anyway, they did use it and they got a few years of fun out of it. But there was a couple of posts left over from there and that's what I've used here. And to join them together so that the, the posts wouldn't fall over, I've used this piece of steel and this was actually an old rail from a a kiddies uh, door that we had at our place to stop the kids from going down the stairs when they were toddlers and uh, it was like a rail and I just pilferized you know the, the steel off it that one of the rails because it had some holes in it and I just um, basically screwed it and used that as a brace to hold it I think I put one on the other side as well yes I did and that was a brace completely recycled you know a brace to hold those posts together and uh, then I wanted to obviously fan out and have somewhere for the vine whatever vine I was growing to be able to to grow and so I had the idea of using some chicken wire galvanized chicken wire because that as you can see has hardly rusted and it stayed all good then it's small bit of rust in places but 10 years old just about and it's still as good as new uh, and I've used that as the trellising material you can use probably anything anything but to make the 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 framework for it I used these as braces and these came from these were left over from the play gym as well but you could use any piece of wood really and and I've screwed them on with big deep wood screws so I drill a hole first and then screw them in with a drill or you can do it by hand and uh, I just had a brace on either side because uh, that's going to support the cross beams and a brace on either side supporting that cross beam and uh, then I attached two pieces of hardwood, scrap hardwood that I just had in the shed one up the top here, this looks like a bit of a cross and one down the bottom and that's really all it was and then I, I attached the chicken wire bent it over however you attach a chicken, chicken wire it doesn't really matter and then I had that framework done made from scrap materials that I had around but if you're going to buy all this you can find all this type of material from the hardware store and you could probably knock this up with the pot including and everything else for I guess a couple of posts $10.50 each uh, 20 you know maybe 50 bucks you could go it less if you went to the dump and found some materials from the uh, from the dump shop or whatever. But yeah, that's uh, that's all that is. So if you have any more questions on that, feel free to ask me down below. Um, so Jan, I hope that answers your question. I didn't get right technical into every screw and all that type of thing, and uh, I know my videos tend to be ramble a bit when I'm when I'm ad-libbing like this but uh, I hope that helped you out all right thanks a lot for watching bye for now